Welcome to our tour of the new version of Digimap for Schools. First, let's look at the key areas. Our map window is where you'll view maps, zoom in and out and move around. Our map selector is on the map window, letting you choose between our different maps. In the top toolbar, you'll find a search box where you can use place names, coordinates and postcodes. The Locate My Position tool, Print, our Aerial Map Information tool are also found here, as well as a handy Start Again button. There are lots of tools in the sidebar, including Drawing, Measurement, Map Keys, Overlays and Adding Data. You can adjust the width of the sidebar with the double arrows, or select Collapse Sidebar to see more map window. Now let's have a look at our global maps. When you first open Digimap for Schools, you're positioned over Great Britain and the World Panorama map from Collins Bartholomew is displayed. You can check the map information in the sidebar to check what map you're viewing and its date. Let's pan over to the Pyrenees and zoom in to have a closer look at that map. To zoom in, I just double click or tap on the map window. You can also use the plus and minus signs on the scale bar to zoom in and out. I'll open the map key in the sidebar to let you see some of the features. In the key, you can see a boundary section. The map gives an up-to-date, accurate picture of world political geography. The boundary between France and Spain is visible here. It also provides rail, road and airports visible in the transport category. If I pan over the mountains, you'll see there are spot heights of major peaks and some gradation in colour to denote different land heights. I'll open the map selector to show you we also have a less detailed global map at smaller scales. Just select the button to the right of world boundaries to display it. This can be a really useful map to use with some of our new overlays. Let's open the overlays menu in the sidebar. At this scale, I can add a latitude longitude grid. Just check any box to switch the overlay on or off. Let's zoom out and go a little further south, then try the major lines of latitude overlay. This world boundaries map can also be a great background map if you want to add your own data to the maps. I'll give an example of adding data later. One last overlay I want to show you is world place names. These can be really useful in areas where place names are not in Roman characters. If I zoom into Cairo, for example, we're looking at our open street map and we have Arabic place names. I can switch on the world place names overlay to get some context. Remember, if you or your pupils ever get a bit lost, the Start Again button on the top toolbar takes you back to the map of Great Britain. Let's change location now. I'm going to search for Anchorage. Note that in the results there are two lists, UK place names and world place names. I'll select Anchorage, Alaska, USA from the world place names list. At this larger scale, the map is OpenStreetMap. This is mapping that's collected and contributed by members of the public and offers fantastic detail in urban areas. Again, there's a key available. I've moved to Paris now just to show you the detail available around the Pompidou Centre, moving towards the river. Let's find a location in Great Britain. I'm searching for York and I'll select York from the UK place name results. I've opened our map selector. I'm going to zoom in on the Railway Museum. In Great Britain, we can select between current Ordnance Survey maps, aerial photography, aerial X, which is the aerial photography plus place names and major road names, 1950 or 1890 historical maps. You won't see OpenStreetMap in Great Britain. Remember, we just select the button to the right of any map name to display it. You can also combine two maps by using the slider bar. Let's show you how to do that. If I select Ordnance Survey on the right and Aerial on the left, then I just drag the slider over to the left to view the Aerial and OS mapping together. We have some more useful overlays when you're in Great Britain postcodes and British National Grid. The detail in both of these overlays adjusts as you zoom in and out. With the drawing tools in the sidebar, you and your pupils can have great fun adding text, shapes, symbols, emojis and images. 
To add a symbol, just select the symbol you want and select the place on the map you want to add it. It's very straightforward. To add text, you can choose the Label tool. First select the tool, then your text options, then select the point where you add, want to add your text. Type in your required text and select OK. You can add polygons. Select the Polygon tool, click or tap to add the first point, then keep clicking for more points. Double click to finish. I'm going to select the Measurement Label tool, then select my polygon to add a measurement label. To add a predefined shape, select the Shape option. I'm going for an oval. This time I'm going to show you the styling options. I select a line colour under Stroke. I want the same colour for my fill colour, so I'm going to copy and paste this hex colour code to the fill box. I can select a line type. I'll go for dashes. Now click once to start drawing. Use your mouse to size and rotate the shape. When you're happy, click again and you're done. Again, I'm going to add a measurement label. We have a text box option to add paragraphs of text. Again, select the tool, place it where you want it. Once you've added your text, you can resize the text box using the double arrow at the bottom right. You can add point and line buffers with the drawing tools. Select the buffer tool. Let's add a point buffer to show a 0.5 mile radius around the school. We can imagine we're discussing with the pupils who lives within that radius. So select point, select 0.5 and miles as your unit. You can check the styling options. We want our fill to be transparent so we can still see the background map. So I move the slider left a little. Now select the centre of the school and your buffer is added. I just need to zoom out to see all of it. Next, let's add a line buffer. Let's imagine we're discussing if the river flooded, what might be affected. I select line. Let's try a 50 metre buffer from the centre of the river. I check the styling options and draw my line. As I zoom in, you can see you could start to discuss the impact on the housing adjacent to the river. I've opened the measurement tools now in the sidebar where you can measure distance and area. Distance is already selected, so I can just start drawing my line. I double click to finish and the distance is shown on the map window and in the sidebar. To measure area, select area in the sidebar, then click to draw your area, double clicking to finish. You can delete the measurements with the option in the sidebar if you wish. Now I've opened the image search tool. This search is a bank of more than 6 million images from the Geograph project and we think it's a really great way to get pupils engaged with exploring an area. Let's try horse as a search and see what we get. You'll see that camera icons appear on the map where there's an image at that location. Just select any camera icon to view more details of the image. You can also enter an asterisk to see all images at a location, but only when you're zoomed in a bit further. I've tried it here and the message says zoom in or try word. So let's zoom in around the beach. OK, so lots of images have popped up now. The circles show clusters of images with the number available. Zoom in further and we can have a look at some of those. You can also add your own images with the drawing tools. Let's show you that. Select the Upload Image tool, select your point on the map, select Choose File, navigate to your image, select it and select Open. Finally, select Upload and there it is. You can add your own data to Digimap for Schools with a CSV file of locations. This is a great way to engage pupils with simple GIS concepts and the power of creating their own data sets. Here I've got a spreadsheet of London landmarks. I've saved it as a CSV file. From the Add Your Own Data menu, select Choose File, navigate to your CSV file and select Open. Select Import and your points should be visible on the map window. I'm going to zoom in and show you one of those points. The marker that's been added has the styling options that I set up earlier. I'll show you those in the drawing tools. You can change the marker. First, I select it with the select arrow. Once selected, I can just choose a different marker. I'll go for a smiley face. Now I'll select the Piccadilly Circus marker and change it to a stick man. You'll find the Save Maps menu in the sidebar. To save your maps within Digimap for Schools, select Save Map, input a title, class name and pupil name and select Save. 
To retrieve any save map, just select it from the list. To print your map, select the print tool from the top toolbar. You have the option of adding a name and map title. Select PDF or JPEG as the format. Both formats look exactly the same. Select A4 or A3, portrait or landscape. You can choose whether to include your drawings and British National Grid lines. There's an Add Legend option, which I'm going to select. Now select Generate Print File to download a printable file. Because I added a legend, my download is a zip file with both my print file and legend inside. I hope that's been a useful introduction to the new global Digimap for Schools. We hope you have great fun using it. Do get in touch with any questions.